Welcome back to part two of our journey in the flagship National Museum of China here in the capital, Beijing. In our last episode, we saw seven of the most valuable national treasures displayed right here in the National Museum that ranged from items that were made by early hunter-gatherer tribes to perhaps the most famous national treasure of them all, the Homuwu Rectangular Ding the largest ceremonial bronze vessel ever discovered. Today we're going to begin right where we left off, with two of the most famous pieces kept here in the National Museum, before finishing with the only imperial empress coronet ever unearthed from an emperor's tomb. You see the crowd gathered around this artifact here. That is the bronze wine vessel with four ram heads that is so famous you can find it in school textbooks all around the country. Built over 3,100 years ago during the Shang Dynasty, it is one of the largest bronze wine containers ever discovered and certainly the most lavishly decorated. On each of its four sides, there is a ram head protruding, featuring very prominent horns. And the entire piece is decorated so thoroughly that not one inch of its surface is left without meticulous carving. And just when we marvel at how unique and well-made that artifact is, here comes the famous bronze mask from the mysterious civilization found in the Sanxingdui site in present-day Sichuan province. This civilization existed at the same time as the Shang Dynasty, yet it is so mysterious we have no written documentation of their existence. And unlike our Shang Dynasty ancestors, who liked to mold bronze into containers to store wine and food, they liked to make masks, very large masks. So stay tuned and subscribe because I will be visiting this very mysterious site in an upcoming episode and show you its infamous golden mask. As I wrap up my time here in the Bronze Age, there are more pieces that represent the best of our ancestors' ingenuity and creativity, speaking both to their intellect and the National Museum's tremendous size as well as its enormous collection of artifacts. This is definitely a can't-miss part of the museum. As we move into the Qing and Han dynasties, the latter of which formed the basis of the Chinese identity, we find these artifacts that most people will recognize, discovered in present-day Xi'an by a group of farmers digging a well. These are the famous terracotta warriors buried with the first emperor of China to protect him in the afterlife. It was during this time period that we began to find other well-crafted objects that are made beyond using bronze that range from this cavalry of clay figurines, each representing court officials and military leaders, to this masterpiece here in the National Museum, the jade burial suit, along with a pillow also made out of jade. And for the first time today, I began to find solid gold objects, the most impressive of which is actually this small seal that was made for the king of the Dian Kingdom, 
that is located in present-day Yunnan Province. But it wasn't that our ancestors during this time period simply moved on from using bronze. In fact, they've become so skillful at the craft that common everyday items such as currencies and measuring tools began to appear rather than only the imperial items made exclusively for the ruling families. And of the bronze wares we continue to find during this time, they're even more detailed and finely made. What we see here represents the absolute best of that time period from every corner of the country, displayed conveniently in one place here in the capital Beijing for all visitors from inside the country and abroad to enjoy. As we move into the Tang Dynasty, considered by many to be the peak of Chinese ancient history, I find this next national treasure, a piece of solid stone that is carved and painted to show us a fearsome warrior from the Tang Dynasty. The warrior is standing on an ox, holding a ceremonial battle sword and wearing a full set of body armor from head to toe. Not one inch of this stone carving is neglected to reflect the warrior status. I mean, look at his headgear and those fearsome eyes. Not to mention there's a phoenix resting on top of his helmet. This artifact is the best symbol of that time period's realistic reflection of human shapes and figures, from military personnel to political officials. The Tang Dynasty sculptures and paintings give us a sneak peek into life in the upper echelons of society during that glorious period of Chinese history. Finally, I come across these Lego-sized wood model buildings that appear very pedestrian at first glance, but they're perhaps the rarest buildings in the entire country. Only three of them exist. These are two of the only three remaining Tang Dynasty wood buildings that are still standing, all of which are in Shanxi province and each will be featured in an upcoming episode. Right after the Tang Dynasty, we have the Song Dynasty that lasted approximately 300 years. And of the numerous exquisite artifacts that were made during this time, this amazing statue of a sitting Buddha carved completely out of wood is the largest Buddhist statue in the entire National Museum's collection. So far, we have seen numerous bronze vessels, jade pieces, stone carvings, and even gold seals. Yet, this wood material statue is perhaps the most precious because unlike the other hardened materials, Wood is susceptible to insects, fire, and water damage. And to see a statue of this quality and size from over 900 years ago and preserved in this condition is a very rare treat. As we come to the final dynasty, in Chinese history, the Qing Dynasty. I come to the only one of its kind object in the entire National Museum, and in the entire country for that matter. The Empress Phoenix Coronet found in the Ming Dynasty Wanli Emperor's tomb. 
the Wanli Emperor, who ruled the country from 1572 to 1620, was buried with his two empresses, and in his tomb, archaeologists found a total of four coronets, with one displayed here, and another one in the Forbidden City Palace Museum collection. They are the only imperial coronets ever discovered. There are nine dragons and nine phoenixes, countless natural white pearls, and so many precious gemstones of different colors. I simply lost count. During the emperor's reign, there were perhaps no more than five thousand officials and attendants who have ever laid eyes on this coronet. Worn by the empress on special occasions, and today the public can see it in the National Museum. It is without a doubt one of the highlights here in the National Museum of China. As I make my way out of the museum, I admire once again how tremendous this grand building is. On the day of my visit, it was packed. And standing on top of its steps, I overlook the entire Tiananmen Square that is even more beautiful and majestic in the evening. It's here that we mark the conclusion of this two-episode series on the National Museum of China, and continue our journey on the road. Thanks for watching my new episode today. Let's stay in touch and subscribe to my channel for more to come. I'll see you on the next one.